with the pinhole size set correctly, we are now in a position to start uh, looking at the sample and adjusting our settings. So we are going to start by using, uh, making the laser scan in what is called live mode. Um, this is sort of a quick and dirty scan mode that doesn't use all of the settings that we will go over later, but it's a good uh, one to get things uh, so that our focal plane is inside uh, our sample uh, and to just get a, an initial uh, calibration of the intensity. Uh, live mode will only scan one of these, whichever one is highlighted, um, even if all three are checked. We will see later that with continuous mode, um, it will scan all of the things that are checked and not just the particular thing that's highlighted. So uh, I want to start by looking at the Alexa Fluor 488. This image that you see here is actually of the same sample, and the 488 um, is phylloidin, so it's labeling actin, and these cells uh, with the staining are, are quite easy to visualize. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to click here on Alexa Fluor 488 just to get things in focus. So I'm going to click on Live. And you can see that we actually can't see anything. So, so this is uh, fairly typical. Uh, the reason is our initial settings, uh, mainly the laser power and the master gain, are low. Uh, to avoid bleaching the sample inadvertently and to avoid damaging the detectors uh, by in using a high voltage that leads to a large amount of saturated pixels. Uh, the other reason that this may be dark is we may not actually be in focus. So uh, to kind of address all these things, what we're going to do is first click on the range indicator. Um, so let me explain what this is. Uh, another reason you may not be able to see anything is that right now things are being displayed on a green scale, uh, where things that are dark are black. Things that are very, uh, you know, have the highest possible pixel value are um, the brightest green, and everything goes on a green gradient. That's a little bit hard to parse out. So instead, we're going to use this range indicator scale, where things that are at zero are blue. Things that are uh, completely saturated. Um, are uh, in red. So that means that pixels that are red, the detector is at its maximum. So that's uh, very bad for any kind of quantification. Uh, even if you all you're interested in is in qualitative analysis of morphology, uh, saturated pixels can distort morphology. And it's also quite bad if you have a lot of them for the detector health. So you can actually damage the detector uh, if you have a lot of saturated pixels. Um, so it's, it's good to know uh, if we have a lot of pixels that are essentially too dim, that are blue, or pixels that are too bright, that are red by turning on the range indicator. That just helps us a little bit. We still can't see anything. So it might be that the laser is too low, the gain is too low, both are too low, or we're out of focus. So how do we how do we get in focus? So um, uh, a, a good option to do it is if you hit this min max button here, this will adjust the display so it doesn't it doesn't change any of the of the acquisition settings. It just adjusts the display so that we can see something. So we can there, there is something there. Uh, it doesn't seem like the focal plane is is fully in the cells. So I'm going to adjust the focus by moving the focus knob on the microscope. I'm moving in one direction, and we can see we go away out out of the cell. If I move in the other direction, we move into the cells, and suddenly they're much brighter. So now this because we have adjusted this here. This isn't a true representation of the data. Um, it's just <clears throat> because we've we've adjusted uh, this display setting. Um, so if we move this to the right, uh, and if we hit this reset button, this is sort of an, a, a more um, kind of faithful representation of the data in its full scale, which you see down here. So this is uh, a histogram of all the pixel intensities in this image. So if I stop this for a second and I zoom in, and let me just move around to an area where there are brighter pixels. So if I hover on this particular pixel, um, you can see down here that there's an X and Y coordinate and a pixel value. And you can see that that pixel value is 25,000 and change. Whereas if I hover here, that pixel value is 39. So every single pixel in this image has an intensity value associated with it. Those intensity values are proportional to the amount of light that came from each of the locations represented by that pixel in the sample. And all of them form this histogram, which is on a log scale on the y-axis. So 
uh, actually the height of this is sort of much higher than this, but it's a good way of seeing all the pixels, okay? And so you can see that uh, the full range goes from zero to about 65,000, more accurately 65,535. So that's the highest possible value you can have. And remember, we don't want any at the highest possible value. Um, and this is the distribution of all the pixels. So here, the, the pixels on the right-hand side of the histogram are the ones from the brightest object, so probably from this or from this. And so you can see if I go to live and I go back to range indicator that I can change the distribution of these pixels and therefore the brightness of the image by adjusting the master gain or the laser power. So if I increase the master gain, you'll see that the image gets brighter and eventually you can see we will visualize some saturated pixels, which are the pixels that got jammed against the right-hand side here. So you can see there's an occasional red spot there, and some red spot there. So we don't want that. So I'm going to lower the master gain. We can also increase the intensity by increasing the laser power. So if I do that, that will also shift this to the right. Now, one thing you may notice, which is the laser power is linear. This is a percent of the total laser power. If you double this, you will get double the laser power and over a reasonably wide range, a doubling of the intensities that you see. This is a voltage on the photomultiplier tube and just take my word for it, it is not linear. So we changed it by uh, you know maybe 25 units, maybe 50 units, which is 10% of 500, which is where we start. And we had a dramatic change. So that's, um, you can see the kind of nonlinearity. So be very careful when you're moving the master gain not to move it up too high uh, so that you get a lot of saturation. If you do move it up way too high and get a lot of saturated pixels, um, the detector will shut off and there'll be like an emergency warning uh, to try to avoid damage. So please don't trigger that. These detectors are extremely expensive and sensitive. We want to uh, keep them sensitive and not have to replace them at considerable expense. Um, so just be careful when you're making those manipulations. So um, obviously this brings up the question, uh, how bright should we make the image? And if we have these two ways of adjusting the brightness, how should we balance them um, to get an image of optimal quality? So that's what we're going to go into in detail uh, in a moment. Let's tackle the first of those two questions which is what intensity targets uh, should we be aiming for? So let me go to live again. Again, you can see the distribution of pixel values in this histogram, and you can see that we have some that are very bright, uh, and they seem actually at the edge, so saturated, so here. So uh, we do not want any saturated pixels uh, because they can damage the detector, and they can make it impossible for us to see fully all the morphological details in the image, and they make it impossible to do any kind of intensity quantification. Um, so we don't want any pixels here. Now you may say, well, this is something I'm normal. Well, then just move it out of the field of view if, if you know you have a um, if, if you're if you're confident that that that's just some piece of junk, uh, and then you know work with this image. Um, but you should be, you should err on the side of caution here. So when you're doing this, uh, this adjustment of intensity to make sure you're not saturated, uh, you want to make sure that what you're looking at is among the brightest things that you would be looking at, at in both uh, the kind of sample, the location in the sample, and the Z plane that you're looking at. So for, I'll, I'll give you an example. So let's say you have something where you're knocking down a protein. You don't start uh, setting up the intensity with, with the condition under which you've knocked down the protein you're looking at. You start with the one with the control or with the one where you're overexpressing it because you want to set things up so that that condition where you expect a lot of the protein and therefore high intensity values, you want to make sure that one is not saturated so that then all the others which you expect to have lower intensity are also not saturated. Within that sample, you want to make sure that you look for a particular area where you have bright objects that are you know, within the range of things that you're interested in. And then you want to make sure by adjusting the Z, fo the, the Z plane, so uh, the focus knob, that you're in the brightest plane. Uh, so instead of you know, setting things up here, 
you want to set them up where things are the absolute brightest. Now, once you're in that position, what do you want in terms of what this histogram should look like? So what you want is first no saturation. So you don't want any pixels at 65,000. Okay. And then what we recommend, so formally, if you don't have any pixel saturating, that's fine. Um, in practice, we recommend that you aim for your brightest pixels and your brightest objects to be sort of around here, kind of the midpoint of the range. Uh, so here, you know, we've exceeded that by a little bit, so we probably want to go down a little bit. I'll, I'll just try gain lowering. So that's about right. So pixels around between 30,000 and 35,000. Uh, that's a good target. Now, um, this is not, you know, a rule etched in stone. It's just a good rule of thumb. Uh, the reason is if you have pixels that are not saturated but are very close here, you can see that this is kind of noisy, so eventually you can get pixels that... Uh, oscillate in and out of saturation. So you'll get a smattering of saturated pixels, which is not great. But the main reason to do this is we have looked at uh, a small portion of the sample, and we think that this is among the brightest objects that we'll look at. But we don't know that for sure. So um, setting things up like this gives us a healthy safety margin in case something brighter shows up. Um, because what we don't want is to then image something brighter have it saturate, and then we're just left with a menu, menu of bad options. We can have a saturated image, which for all the reasons I already explained is something bad. We can change the settings for that particular image, but that's also bad because then it's not comparable to everything we did before. We can exclude that, that cell or that object from comparison, but then we've reduced our universe of things that we're studying. Or uh, we can change the settings so that new thing is not saturated, and then change the settings and re-image everything we've already done, which wastes uh, our time. Um, so none of those options are good. So it's um, it's better to err on the side of leaving some room here so that when we image something else, we can be moderately confident that that something else is not going to saturate it. And if you have um, a situation where you're looking at things where the expression values uh, of you know a protein, like they vary widely, you may want to leave even more breathing room. Okay, again, this sort of aiming for the middle is a, is a useful rule of thumb for most people in most conditions, uh, but under certain circumstances, that may not be the best option for you. That answers then the first uh, question that I had mentioned, which is what brightness should we shoot for? But there's another question that's still open, which is we have two sliders to adjust that brightness. Which ones do we adjust and why? Do we just do all laser power? Do we just do all master gain? How do we decide? So let me show you um, some options, and, and you'll be able to see um, kind of the results here. To be able to see a little bit more detail, what I'm going to do is lower uh, this pivot point, which will make the image brighter. Um, Saturated pixels, again, will only show up in red, and I, I can see the histogram, um, but this just makes it easier for us to, to evaluate um, the quality, which is uh, the basis, one of the bases of which we're going to make this decision. So um, let, let's, let's switch to a different setting. So we're at 0 0.07. Let me lower the laser by a factor of 10 to 0 0.07. Obviously, the image gets dimmer. But let me compensate and increase the intensities back to where we were by increasing the master gain. So I'm looking at the histogram. So now our intensities are uh, kind of roughly where they were before, but you can see the image is of much lower quality. So this is a generalizable statement. When you have low laser power and high gain, the images are of lower quality than if you have high laser power and lower gain. So, um, why would you want this? Well, sometimes uh, your main concern is bleaching, which is the um, constant decay of the signal as the fluorophores are destroyed. Now, to check for bleaching, a quick and dirty way is to check whether uh, you know the, the brightest pixels here are drifting to the left. Uh, that can be a little bit tricky. I'll show you a, a, a more rigorous way of checking bleaching uh, in a moment. But you can see that quality is very easily accessible by eye. Um, uh, by eye. And so what we'll do is we'll adjust um, the balance of master gain and laser power uh, 
by finding different combinations and seeing how they affect um, the quality of the image. And we'll do this, I find that it's easiest to do this when, when you operate kind of with factors of two. Uh, what I mean by this is our, our brightest pixels are around you know 35,000. So let me lower the gain until our brightest pixels are more around 15,000. Something like that. And then I will double the laser power. And I expect if I double the laser power that I will get roughly to the same brightness I had before. So double this is 0 0.14. So you can see, indeed, we got kind of back to the same intensity before, but it looks now significantly better. So let's try that again. So if I lower this gain until I am at around 15,000, And then I increase this by double, so to 0 0.28. I'm at the same intensity before, but now the quality is even better. I can try that again. So if I lower, and I can only lower it until 500. It doesn't go below 500. Um, so that's that's your limit for how low the master gain can go. From 500, if you lower it further, it just goes to zero and turns it off. So I'll double this. That's going to be 0 0.56. And so you can see now we have a very uh, high quality image compared to where we started. And so when does this end? Well, when you can't lower the master gain further would be one answer. Or when you double this and you don't really see an improvement in quality or a noticeable improvement in quality. Or when you don't see the signal doubling. So if you double laser power and you don't see the signal doubling, uh, that happens uh, because of another photophysical phenomenon where the, the fluorophores, you can't, they're all being excited all the time. And so you, you, you put more laser in, but you don't excite any more fluorophores. When that's happening, uh, it, it, you're usually uh, in a situation where you will probably have a lot of bleaching, which is the other constraint. If you see that you've raised this so much that uh, the intensities start dropping, that's that's a, an indication that you need to stop or find another way to adjust um, uh, your imaging parameters to get high quality. So I would say that this is a it's a pretty good image um, uh, as a starting point. And so so I'm, I'm happy with this. Uh, and we can move um, forward uh, with these uh, settings for this channel. Uh, if you if you have a very dim sample uh, and you, you can't increase the laser power far enough to, to get what you want at the quality that you want, uh, you may need to engage the high intensity laser range. Without this engaged, the 405 laser max out, maxes out at 3.5%, the 488 at 4.5%, and the 561 and 640 at 5%. So if you want higher laser powers than that, you will need to click on this, and then all of your lasers will be will have access to a higher power. I think for most people, for most samples, you will not need to do that. But if you do, you just click on that before um, before starting. So you can see if I stop it, click on high intensity range, the laser power will be changed for all tracks. Let's move, overwrite some settings. Do you want to change the laser setting? If you say yes, then this slider, you'll have access to higher powers. Okay, I don't want to do that um, right now. So I'm just going to say no. We now have a nicely balanced sample in the Alexa Fluor 488 channel, let's use the same principles to adjust the other channels. So I'm going to go to Live, and I'm going to switch now to the 594. I'm going to click on Range Indicator. And you know, keep in mind that this is adjusted, um, so things are a little bit brighter um, just for display purposes. I'm going to increase the master gain. So usually I always start by increasing the master gain, because this is a non-destructive approach. Uh, Increasing the master gain will not uh, bleach the sample, whereas increasing the laser might. So that's about our target intensity. Um, let me check whether I'm in the proper focal plane. You can see I was a little bit off. That's a little brighter. And in this focal plane, you can see that there are some saturated pixels, which you can also see in the uh, histogram here. So this is clearly too bright. So I'm going to lower the master gain a little bit until I get in the range that I want. OK, so that's about where I want to be. And so now the question is, do we have enough quality? And so uh, a good check is to lower the laser power. Uh, if you can see something, you can lower the laser power by a factor of 10 and kind of start working your way back up from there. 
So I do this. This is 10 times less power. To get the same intensity, I have to increase the master gain. And so this looks horrible, uh, as expected. So now I'm going to lower the master gain until I get to 1,500. And then double this. That looks better, but there's still kind of a lot of noise here. Um, so what I mean by that is the contrast of these are these are um, this is a, a dye that stains mitochondria. The contrast of the mitochondria versus everything else is pretty bad. There's a lot of sort of salt and pepper noise in comparison to the things we're looking at. So I am going to uh, lower the gain again to get my pixel values more around 15,000, and then double the laser power. So I'm going to go to 0.48. So now this is starting to look significantly better. Uh, I'm going to keep repeating that until I get a quality that I'm happy with. So again, I lower the gain until my intensities are around 15,000. I double this. This is about 1%. So you can see already this looks significantly better. If I lower the master gain further and double this by going to 2%. That looks quite nice. If I lower it further, go to 4%. That looks nice. It's unclear whether it looks that much nicer than the one at 2%. So it, it might or might not be worth uh, doing that in this case. I'm going to leave it on um, for now. Um, but you can see that it's, it's debatable whether the increase in quality is worth the potential increase in bleaching, which you know we don't see right now. Uh, this drifting very significantly down, uh, but it's a little bit tricky to see with this. So I'll, I'll show you in a moment how to how to do a more rigorous check of the uh, of the bleaching. But let's leave it like this for now. I want to take a gamble that this might bleach a little. Just to actually, that will be useful to show you what bleaching looks like. So that's uh, with the 594. Let's go to DAPI now. Um, so we're going to go to range indicator. Um, you can see nothing seems saturated. Let me double check that we're in the brightest Z plane. Okay. Um, so let me increase the master gain. That's always where I start because it's not destructive. It's not like increasing the laser. We're roughly in the middle here. You can see the, the pixels scattered between 30 and 45,000. Um, and the quality, I would say, is pretty good. But let's see. Um, again, you don't need to do these like factors of 10 of reduction of laser power. Um, but it, it's illustrative, I think, for, for this um, training video to have that. So I'm just going to lower that to 0 0.07. As a result, things are now quite noisy. But if all you needed to do was identify the nuclei, this would actually be enough. And for the DAPI, I would say err on the side of less is more because this laser will um, will photo damage and sometimes photo convert things. Um, so if you can get away with um, kind of a lower laser power for the DAPI, that's usually a good thing because this will not just bleach the DAPI, it'll bleach other things. And sometimes it can photo convert nuclei uh, that are stained with DAPI into other channels. So, um, and, and honestly, usually you don't need a lot of detail in the DAPI unless you're studying, um, you know, so like nuclear micro domains or something like that. So it, it's usually better to, to err on the side of not going crazy, trying to get an amazing DAPI image because you, you typically don't need it. Um, that said, this is, uh, kind of on the on the not so great side. So so let me improve it at least a little bit. Let me lower the master gain until our brightest pixel is around 15,000. I'll double the intensity here to 14, 0.14%. Already that looks much better. If I do this one more time, I think we'll be we'll have something that's high quality and a pretty low laser power that we can work with. Yeah, so that that looks good. Um, so now we have three channels that each are within the right range. They each look good from the quality standpoint. I don't have any obvious signs of bleaching. You can see that this one is slightly offset in Z. Um, there we go. Uh, I don't have any obvious signs of bleaching, so that's uh, good. Um, yeah, the, the red is just slightly offset from, from, from the green. That's just where the, the things are in the cells. Um, 
so th this is a this is an excellent starting point uh, for uh, further optimization.